So last night, somebody sent me a picture of this dress and asked me, what color do you think it is? And I said what color I thought it was. So I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. It's like, whoa, okay, whatever. Uh, and then I get on Twitter and it's just like, wow, everybody's arguing about what color this dress is. Uh, you know, is it black and blue? Is it gold and white or whatever, okay? And, and everybody, I get to school today and people are asking me, Mr. Ritchie, what color is that dress? And I'm like, come on, why is this such a big deal, people? I mean, it's just obvious that the dress is blue and white. So let's just enough already, okay? But it really got me thinking because I'm about to teach nationalism to my European history students, and I think that this is a teachable moment because it's really weird. I've seen people on Twitter saying stuff like, hey, if you think that dress is white and gold, then I'm gonna cut you or something. People are getting really, really into this, and I have no idea why. It's, it's just it's just strange, but then I thought about it, I and mean, people are going into two camps and getting to the point of threatening each other and thinking that they're superior, you know, oh, people are better when they see th this way, this way. And it got me thinking about nationalism. And really, all this is, is people wanting to be around people and associate with people who agree on the color of the dress, so to speak. The only difference is that in the context of European history, you see that people want to associate pe with people on the basis of their language, on the basis of their religion, chiefly about language. But if you think about it in terms of dress, let's think about German unification or Italian unification. And they're thinking in terms of there are people over there across political borders that see the same color dress as I do. So therefore, we should combine forces and we should create a bigger country with people who see the same color dress. Whereas if you go to somewhere like Austria and you've got these 10 different ethnic groups and they're thinking, hey, I'm totally team gold and white. I don't want to be ruled by these black and blue people. Or when you look at the Greeks who were still under the dominion of of the Turks. You have the same sort of situation here where the Greeks are thinking in terms of, look, we've got a different language, a different religion. We are blue and black and we don't want to be ruled by these white and gold Turks and that sort of thing. So that's just a good way to understand nationalism. We tend to gravitate toward people who see the world the same way that we do and we don't want to be ruled by people and in political associations with people who don't. So that's that. Anyway, hope that helps explain nationalism in this context. Don't hurt anyone over this dress thing. Really, people, it's not that big of a deal. Subscribe if you haven't already. TomRitchie.net, Twitter, Instagram. I'll see you soon with some more Drive Home History. Until the next drive.